<laughs> yeah, that's how we're, that's how you guys want to start this. Yeah. Okay. Well, just because you were talking about it. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, you, you guys are go for it. You guys already started. With no, it. you called it out now. Now I'm embarrassed. I don't yeah, you should anymore. be embarrassed. That was pretty cringe. Cringe plus ratio. Wow. You're cringe. Yeah, no, I know, but you're plus ratio. In this ratio. podcast, you said the most cringy but you're, thing. But you're plus ratio, okay? So like, there's that. I've never, like, I've never said anything that Renee went cringe at. You have. And she, no, I haven't. You have. No, and I haven't. no, here's why. Here's why I know you have. Because Rafa has done and said shit where when we were in person, Renee physically cringed at. I'm talking about the podcast, Hector. I'm talking about in real life. There's a difference. Yeah, like Rafa was saying, on podcast, yeah. outside of the pod, but not on the pod. Have I cringed? Have, he's exactly. done and or Thank said you. shit while we were recording in person, where you just like physically like ball up. Liar! And you're, like, you're lying. I've seen she it. I literally right called you out. Me. She literally <laughs> called you out saying cringe. I don't I'm, care. Uh huh. Sure. You're the one that cares. Mm-hmm. Speaking of something we care about, though, the anime corner top ten animes of the week. You. has come out for week six of the fall 2021 season and man oh man has things shaken up from the uh, putting is from the no- the results is from november 5th to november 12th so we're a few days behind but this oh, is how yeah. it works um and like i said the the list has shaken up a bit um we have some newcomers to the scene and we also have uh some people kind of rising up the ranks quite Quite a bit, actually. Uh, newcomers to the scene. Actually, I'll just go through the list from number 10 to number 1. Number 10, Taisho Ultimate Fairy Tale coming in from number 8, dropping down to number 10. Uh, ranking in at number 9, Ranking of Kings drops down from 6 all the way to 9. Irina the Vampire Cosmonaut jumps up from 9 to number 8. Komi Can't Communicate stays at number 7 this week once again. Uh, banished. From the Heroes Party, I Decided to Live a Quiet Life in the Countryside has jumped up all the way from number 11, which is right outside the range of the list, to number 6. That is the biggest jump from... That's a that's five a five-tier five jump. Yeah, pretty big. Um, a really good episode. Yeah, I actually saw some clips from that episode, and I can see why people enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, 86 Part 2 has jumped down from number 1 all the way to number 5 on the list. Uh, tough scenes. And I said jump, but I mean drop down. Um, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as an ash, uh, an aristocrat jumps down or drops down from three to four. And in the top three, we have some newcomers for the first time in the top three. My senpai is annoying yeah. for the first time in the top three. Mario Chan goes to number two from rank five to rank two this week. Yeah. And no surprise at all, because this was the number one show this season and it's finally getting to the point where people are really interested, Musoko Tenshi, or Mushoko Tensai, Jobless Reincarnation Part 2, jumps up from number two to number one this week as the number one anime of the week six fall 2020 anime. Um, how do we feel? I mean, the biggest one is seeing World's Finest Assassin in the, in the top four pretty much every week is, is fucking dope. Uh, 86 dropping down to number five is kind of crazy. This is kind of where I expected it to be in like the mid range of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Mushoko Tensai, no surprise, it's finally hit number one. I think it's hit number one before in previous weeks, but it has. It's been number one before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marioka Chan, that's a big surprise to me. Great episode. Um, now here's my um, question: Does it leave off at a point where you think it's going to stay within the top three, or do you think will it drop down out of top three? Um, it added a new dynamic to the show. Um, where it's the, the 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 little psychic girl with the ponytails or the pigtails, she kind of, she kind of becomes like part of the group now, and like the dynamic between her and um, Murioko Chan is very funny, so it's open to like a lot of like funny scenarios that can happen, um, because uh, I don't want to give too much away from the episode, but the but the, the girl with the, the pigtails, she thinks that Miracle Chan is like super powerful, like a psychic or whatever. And Miracle Chan, she like she isn't. She just she just could see the the ghost. So certain scenarios happen where she thinks she's she's like obliterating, like exercising the the, the ghosts and shit. Like, it's a really funny setup that they have going on. So if it, if it keeps going down that path, 
I can see it being up there. Like it's it's it was a really fun episode this this week. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and man. Then, um, with uh, with Senpai, I'm already. I'm just gonna go at it, Hector. Don't worry about it. I got you, dog. But Senpai is annoying. Um, it was another great episode. Uh, we finally met um the the main the main girl, the little short girl. Her grandpa stopped by, and he and like the main guy had like this like back and forth thing going on. It was hilarious. Another really, it was a really fun episode. I really enjoyed this episode a lot. So like, I'm not surprised. They up the rank like that. Um, it, was, it was a good episode, but like Miracle Chan definitely was like the outstanding one from the from those two episodes or those two shows. Okay, Renee, how do you feel about the list? Um, I haven't, so I haven't caught up with Miracle Chan. Um, it but seeing it like each week like it it goes up like it's doing very well it makes me like just want to watch like to keep watching um so i just i like seeing this list just because i like seeing like it kind of helps me out like figure out like what shows i should you know get into still um this mushoku tensei it wasn't on my list but like it's been up there for weeks now and i'm just like i know this is part two so i know i would have to catch up but this list is just helpful for like those people who like don't really know what to watch. Like it's helping me. I'm like, oh, okay. So like Morocco Chan has been, you know, it's been in the top 10 for sure for the past few weeks. And like, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I need to get back into the show. Um, so yeah, no, it's just, it's cool to see. And, I, will, um, I will say you probably won't like number one because it is an isekai. So, you know. Oh, dang. I was but. Just- it it just I mean I don't know it just the fact that it's number one that means they're doing something right you know what I mean I don't know we'll see I know I said I didn't like easy guys but what if this is the one I don't know it could be <laughs> if you didn't like re zero like that or or slime even though I know they're like on opposite ends like this you you probably won't like this one well I liked re zero more than I liked slime I was not a fan of slime. But I also didn't, like jump back into Reserve. Not that I didn't like it. Um, I didn't have the a problem with that show. I just it's the genre that I'm not like used to yet. So I think you know within is Easy Kai's like there's different things going on and like just out of the ones I've watched, probably Reserve is still probably like up my list. So mm-hmm. I just gotta keep watching. I just gotta, yeah. you know, that's it. Also mm-hmm. true, but I, 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 I just remembered another reason why you won't like this. It's because, uh, uh, they do kind of a little over sexualize women in in this show. Mm-hmm. Men too, but definitely over sexualized right, women. Yeah, I'm over it. You, it's okay. You, you won't like this one for <laughs> sure. Okay, I won't. I won't even bother. Um. By the way, I just want to say that um. Comey can't communicate. It's on number seven. I'm kind of sad in that because it's a really good show. This is a past episode was really funny. Uh, it's just I don't know, like it's 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 quirky and it's really out there with the humor. But I really enjoy what they're doing. So I mean, it's still in the top ten. Like it just is. because it's in a seventh spot doesn't mean it's terrible. I mean, it's, it's been not, on it's been no. on the list for a bit. Yeah, it's it's it, I like what they're doing. It's some really good stuff. Like the 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 side characters are really funny. They're they're really silly. They're like they're really out there, and I just that's something I really enjoy. Um, but I was gonna say really quickly, um, uh, Blue Period is still at eleven. I think was it eleven last time, wasn't it, or was it like no? It was I think no, it was, it was at like twelve 13. or thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Because it so, says one of these was eleven. Uh, banished you're right. hero. You're right. So yeah. I think it was a little bit which is crazy too, because I ha- I've had that one. I have my eye on that episode, but or that show, but I've never actually watched it. Um, mm. and I mean, seeing it shoot all the way up to number six is it's pretty dope. It's another isekai, I think. Oh uh, yeah, I'm looking at the list that yeah that didn't make it in the top ten. I'm still kind of upset that Tack Up Um Op Destiny isn't. Isn't it's higher. Yeah, it's at fourteen. I'm um, not really surprised. I kind of fell off it to be honest. Really? Yeah. Aww, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, but yeah, I can see why it's not in the top ten. Being in the like the top thirteen, like thirteen, twelve, eleven, I can see it, but I don't think it's ever gonna break 
top 10. And I feel like Blue Period is just too niche of an anime that people aren't going to put it in the top 10. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. give it the time of day that it deserves. Um, good. Also, it's... The World's Finest Assassin dropping a number – or dropping out of the top three. Um, I'm not surprised because this episode was very – um dark and kind of messed up and uh it didn't focus much on the on the the main character which i'm guessing is the biggest pull for a lot of the fans but this one kind of uh established another character that's going to be added to like the main group but it was in a very dark kind of manner um mm. uh it kind of involved like uh child trafficking and, and shit like that and, and yeah it, wow. got, it got really dark yeah like human trafficking and... shit yeah and our favorite show of the season, um, Platinum Men. It's at 15. I wouldn't say Good. favorite. Uh, it should stay at 15. <laughs> uh, sorry. I just don't think. I, I guess I had higher expectations for that show. And Can we just talk about it right now? You know I, mean? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely on the on the list. But before we do, um, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Bento Box Cast. This is officially episode 28 um and hi hi welcome welcome this yeah. is the most animated podcast on all the internet and you can find us on anywhere that is associated with anchor.com as well as on our main channel geek jar 3000 where you can also find a variety of other podcasts so make sure to look around on that homepage on youtube to see what else we got going for you um i kind of like that intro a little bit better than our normal one um if you have any suggestions as to what you want us to talk about any kind of talking points anything you want us to discuss you want want to share it with us on either our twitters at the bento box cast or at geek 3000 and you could also message us on our personal twitters and by message i mean tweet at us um yeah <laughs> Don't, I mean, don't message us, but if you want to, sure. But don't be weird. You can. You yeah. Can Just don't be weird about it, you know? It's uh, an option on Twitter. That is an option on Twitter. Unless you, like, disable it. I'm getting into the, the nitty-gritty of it. Yeah, just do that, right? And if you want, also join the Discord. Check in the description down below for all the links. Um, Platinum End Episode 6. Platinum End Episode 6. Uh, I will say that this episode was probably the one I was most into really yeah because of the surprise ending that ending yes okay that's what i wanted to bring up yeah i i have like i have this like love hate relationship with this with this show right now mm -hmm. like for this most from most of this episode i was just like this is okay it's not that big of a deal like i was not really into it and then like i the thing is like i feel like this show is trying to be a little bit too edgy with its material like look how edgy we are look how out there we are you know you know, with the like, especially with the um, Metropolitan Man, like, get, uh, hit the that one girl with the red uh, arrow, and she's over there just like just doing shit with the other girl, and like they're showing you like, I guess like you really don't have to show me this. But oh, Metropolitan Man didn't hit him with the red arrow. It was the other girl, the the pink haired girl. He gave her the he gave her red arrows. And wings. yeah, but he hit her, he hit her with a red arrow too. He has her under control. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you meant like uh, yeah. he hit the the student girl with the. No, 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 no. The the girl with like the I guess was purple hair. I don't remember. The... I think it was pink hair. Her Metropolitan Man hit her with that arrow and then gave her the arrow, another arrow in wings, and then that girl was uh, going around killing other girls. Like that was like the whole setup of the episode. This uh this pink haired girl was killing other um killing uh high school girls. And then it was pretty much it was, it was pretty much like setting up a trap for the other god candidates, pretty much. Um, but anyway, so like like they were showing her like kind of like making out with the other girl, and stuff like that, and just like I just I felt like it's like damn, look how edgy we are, look how crazy we are, you know? Like I was just like okay, I get it, but like I didn't really have to do all that. Um, but so that's why that's why I'm just kind of like whatever with 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 the with this episode until the ending where um what's his name went um he he joined i think it was the last episode or the episode before that he was another god candidate he was like the, the guy who was dying and got another chance to uh you know live or whatever to this for like so he got like his family mm -hmm. the was he the, is i he don't the know detective? his name i forgot who, i forgot what was his job i think he's a detective or like a cop or something like that but um Right before that, they they were trying to like figure out a plan, like oh, how are we gonna like stop Metropolitan Man and this girl from continuing doing all these killings and this and that. 
And they're like, oh, we're going to have to kill. By the way, the main character's a bitch. Whatever his name is. He's a punk. Yeah, um, I'm already. I got a note of them when uh, I don't know if it was this episode or the last episode, but uh, they essentially asked him like, "Hey, like if Metropolitan Man had uh, your like episode? love, yeah, if you have your love interest, like uh, not necessarily at, at arrow point or whatever, like right about a killer, like would you take the shot to kill him, or uh, would you use a red arrow and yeah. risk the risk the the chance of him having a red arrow already in him?" Um, and he's like, "Oh, I can't kill." And he's like, "I can't kill." kill. And like, I was like, "Bro, punk. that is you're a fucking bitch, bro." That is he's weak. Yeah, like, what I, is... I've, I, he's starting to get into the the Kazuya for you know just the hated main character main guy. What is this, what is this thing that these anime have these characters that were these these main protagonists that like there's just a bunch of punks, uh, Kazuya Takemichi, now this guy like what the fuck's happening here? Like I I just hope that at some point he just becomes this badass and. Boom. Like he gets over it, yeah. Like I, I'm fuck? hoping. I hope it's not a situation like Takamichi, where like Takamichi just stays himself like throughout the whole season. Yeah. I'm hoping like there's this is what we're getting, and then something happens, and it's gonna change him completely, and then he's just gonna be super awesome. That's right. my hope, guys. Yeah, I also hope. <laughs> I kind of doubt it, but <laughs> but anyways, like the main thing about this episode, the main thing that was like like that, the thing that that like, that's gonna keep me going or anything that's going to make me watch the next episode was pretty much the ending of the episode where the the detective guy he flies over there he has like his armor and he has like with him um and he's gonna kill the girl because they're on top of this like skyscraper that's where she's like hanging out with a dead body that's of this girl she killed and then um and she's like hey yeah you know a metropolitan man just told me just gonna hang out and wait for you to get here they can so like all the instructions he gave me or some shit like that, and so then like you you as a viewer are led to believe like that Metropolitan Man is gonna show up or there's gonna be a fight like something's gonna happen here like there's gonna be some conflict, uh, but what you don't expect is what happens where Metropolitan Man just blows the fuck up out of the whole building, uh, presumably killing the girl and uh, the detective. That shit surprised the hell out of me. I was like, yo, I need to see what happens next here. Because, like, the show is kind of like, man, but the one thing out of this show that is bringing me, that keeps me coming back is Metropolitan Man and how much he does not give a fuck. He does what he wants when he wants. He kills who he wants when he wants to kill them. Like, he doesn't care. And he's like, he's like the bad guy that, that, that other bad guys should take note of. Like, He's just like, yeah, I'm just going to book this fucking building. Like, fuck you. I'm not going to give a monologue. I'm not going to, like, fuck around. Like, I have, I have a chance to kill you. I'm just going to take it. Like, it was so fucking cool. I'm I'm kind of rooting for Metropolitan Man here more than anybody else. Oh, yeah, honestly, I feel the same way. Like, I mean, I know it's fucked up because especially what he did last episode to, like, the little girl. Like, he just, you but, know, like, killed that right there, like, But, like, that's, like, another yeah, example. He just like, shows, like, how sick and, like, fucked up he is. Like, how like, he doesn't, he doesn't. Get fucked, it's not like, even he that he, he that doesn't care, girl. but it's, like, he's going to get what he wants whatever way he, like, he has to. And I, and I really, like, at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm with Ralph. I'm kind of fucking with him, and, I, and I'm kind of rocking with him and want him to be the, the god because it's just, like. The main character, yeah. I don't even, I don't even know his name, but Takemichi or whatever. I don't know anyone's <laughs> Takemichi name in this show. <laughs> yeah, Takemichi, Takemichi is too. like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, hey, like, uh, you, you need a man up, do something about it, because right now, like, you're, I don't, I honestly don't think a lot of people really care for him as a, like, a character. He's oh, annoying like, right now. Yeah. But I have faith in him. Like, I'm rooting for him. Um, I feel like now, you know, based off this engine we got in this episode if the if that guy has now died the other god candidate like i kind of want to know like what is he going to do next because i, I kind of want to see how metropolitan metropolitan right is that how you say his name metropolitan 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 man yeah metropolitan man yes i ca- i want to see him get taken down that's what i'm waiting for and I, and i do feel like Takemichi <laughs> is going to be the one who does it. And I just kind of want to see, I want to see his plan. I just want to see it unfold. Um, yes, he's annoying. He's not doing much, but I think whether it's this event or something else is going to happen, I, I think he's going to step up. I'm going to have some, I have some faith in him. I think the girl's going to die and that's what's going to make him snap. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to happen. And then I wouldn't be surprised. 
Um, and then he's gonna go full on like, I think it was like, <laughs> like uh, light when he like, m like you know, full on rogue. Um, That'd be cool. I, I like light. <laughs> or just any any, any I... character that just kind of snaps when they have too much that, power. That that's that's the one thing about this show that like I kind of want to give it props that like, um, it, it has this feel like anybody can die any. They keep introducing these god characters, to us, and a lot of them have died already. Mm -hmm. You know. Like in, either in the same episode or in, or in the following episode, you know, like the the detective, he died this episode. Before that, it was the little girl. Well, we don't know if he's guys. dead. Well, we yet. don't know. He yeah. might not be dead. Bro, bro, if he if he didn't die from this, I remember, I'm calling he, they bullshit. They have angel wings I mean, that are like really faster than right. like bullets and shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You're you're I don't know. I mean, no, I trust know. me. I want him to die because then it'll like put some more sense into the main character. Like, yo, shit, like you can't be like a punk anymore like you have to mm -hmm. you have to kind of man up and like if he dies i feel like that's gonna be the first step towards him actually getting to that point but um i kind of have the feeling that he's not gonna die i might call bullshit if he doesn't die i don't know I, if he doesn't die i'm i'm pretty sure i'm gonna not fall off on the show because we're, we're watching it for the season but like that's where i'm kind of gonna be like all right well i'm ready to check out whenever like these ne these next yeah, like um... five episodes because we're gonna be on episode seven already by that point um like I'm kind of ready to 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 finish this season with that like show. I'm, yeah, like I'm 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 ready to drop it if he doesn't die because. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like that it's, was, it's gonna be a tough sell for sure. Who the fuck up? Yeah. So. Um. Uh, oh, sorry. I just wanted to just note that like, this episode made me really uncomfortable. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like the whole thing with what's your face, the girl with the glasses, the murderer. Mm -hmm. That was uncomfortable. There were just some scenes in this episode where I'm just like, okay, I do not like the fact that this is on my screen right now. Like, it was just really weird. It. it was so weird. I knew it. The, the second that came on, I was yeah, like, I, I know like, Renee yeah. is not having a great time. Oh, right my God, guys. I was literally like, oh, my, I had to close my eyes. Oh, my God. I can't even watch this right now. It was – I didn't know – how this episode was gonna go and yeah. when it started with that i'm like mm -mm. i'm like this is not for me at all um yeah i just the show does what it's what it wants and i i just don't know how i really feel about it um i yeah. guess right now uh you might have to get used to that because uh like mm. apparently what's going on with this with the trend of like just shows in general and like what's popular like shit like that's kind of starting to become more and more uh, in your face, like Mushoku Tensei has shit like that. Well, I'm not watching that. We were decided. Yeah, and then like <laughs> this, and then yeah, and then Goblin Slayer shit like that. Like Rafa knows, like this has been around for a long time, but it just keeps it's becoming more and more in your face, and show. and, I mean, and, and a lot more shows. Show. Yeah. You won't get the shit in like Slice show. of Life. You won't get the stuff in like the the mm. Shonen type shows. Uh, yeah, and, or and you get I mean, something I, light, but not like that. And I guess, like, yeah, now that I'm just seeing a lot more, like, I guess now it's more in my face now than it has in the past. So now it's, I'm just in the uncomfortable stages. Like, now I'm kind of learning that, like, okay, yeah, like, may, I, I guess I'm not, like, expecting it to come up. But when it comes up, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I would. But I think now that I'm just watching more of it it's, it's still uncomfortable don't get me wrong oh 100 um, yeah i still watched the episode like it wasn't like oh no i gotta turn this off like i'm so uncomfortable no I kept watching it it was just more like i guess i didn't see it happening like sometimes you can tell shows like where they're going like if something inappropriate is going to happen but like just based off what we got so far in platinum Man, i didn't think i didn't think it was going to be a thing in, until it was and i was like oh okay so so i didn't think it was gonna go that far but i kind of saw something like okay. like this happening again because of literally like the end of episode one where like the guy's in a car with all those girls and then they explain later True. on that like he he hit him with the red arrow so they're all kind of forced to do that and i'm just like mm, i can see something now. like that again <laughs> happening yeah mm -hmm. but then this was like just, uh, this was intense this is like intense. The, the thing is like i just feel like this show's just trying to be too edgy they're just trying to like look how crazy and shocking we are guys I feel like that's the problem with it, you know, because like, like they, you didn't really need that scene. That that scene didn't really add much. So like, yeah, she's crazy and she's just like she's just like doing stuff with the girl, but like it didn't really. I don't know. It just it, it, it was pretty far. It just pretty like it. I feel like they not dragged it out, but it was 
longer than it needed to be. Like they kept putting it in your face. Like, okay, like I, I get it. I get it. I'm good now. Like, we only needed yeah. a few seconds of it. And then they kind of just showed it, showed it a couple of times. I'm like, all right, I'm, I don't like this. Like for me, like for me, it's like, if I know the, the show's all about stuff like that, then I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, that's what the show's about. But when when it like when they kind of just throw it in there like that like randomly, I'm just like, I guess. Yeah, that's like, and that's how doing? I felt. Yeah. yeah, it was just weird. That was it. Yeah, well, I feel like we've uh, <laughs> we we've gone in circles regarding this episode. It was not it was not a pleasant watch, but it got us hooked at the end. Um, yeah, to the point where we're. we're at least myself and Rafa, maybe even Renee, are like, okay, cool. Let's see what happens next episode. Um, but yeah, uh, that's uh, that's Platinum End Episode 6. We'll see for Episode 7. And then now, we are moving on to the news segment, the news portion of this. Uh, we have some crazy cool stuff that's kind of in the talks and what's... Uh, you know, been revealed as of late, and I'm just going to start off with probably one that uh, that kind of intrigued me when I saw it literally today as of recording. Um, there's going to be an anime series uh, being created that is like the Netflix show Squid Games, and it's going to be releasing in 2022. The manga series uh, Tomodachi Game, written and illustrated by Yuki Sato, will be getting an anime release uh, like I said, in the year 2022, the series is being compared with Netflix's Squid Game because of a similar plot. Squid Game is the most successful series of streaming giant Netflix to date. The, ser- the series has impressed entertainment lovers from all over the world. Uh, the synopsis of the Tomodachi game tells the story of Yuichi Katagiri, a young student who has been in a financial problems all his life. However, due to the sort the sport of his friends, he remained positive. Yuichi saves up around 2 million yen, which is around $20,000, for school trip fees, but the money goes missing and all the suspicion falls to Yuichi's friends who are in charge of collecting the money. After a few days, Yuichi and his friends receive a mysterious letter. They are offered to play a friendship game, and the winner of the game will have his debt cleared. Um, They will decide what matters the most, friendship or money. Ooh. Ooh, spooky spooky i mean yeah um i f- i feel like i've seen anime like that before where it's kind of like games like that where it's like a survival game let's see who can who can last the longest and things like that or, or like even amongst like uh teens and stuff like that like this is it's not a a new anime premise you know um but if it's piggyback back piggybacking off of like the success of squid game uh we'll see like we'll see if it's uh if it's any much of a banger, um, and and when exactly, or or rather, what it's what it's going to be competing with in whatever season it comes out with, because I know twenty twenty two is supposed to have like some pretty big uh, anime releases as well. So, well, I I feel like I feel like it, um, I don't really feel like they they're making this just because of Squid Game. I mean, like this this specific series has, has already had two live action films made. So like, there's already a fan base with this. I just feel like, like, oh, like this would be a perfect like the timing is perfect for this almost, you know. So it is it, like it is piggybacking off Squid Game, but like I don't, I don't feel like that's the whole reason why. It just seems like this is just uh, another popular series, and then she kind of it kind of reminds me of like um um what's that movie? Um, I think it's called Battle Royale. Yeah, Battle Royale. It's an old uh from it's a two thousand movie from back in the day. It, it's like uh it kinda has like that feeling of that. Well Squid Game also has kinda like that feeling like that too, but it's a little bit different. Where like in in Battle Royale they just put everybody they put this class into like this island and it's like a battle royale game. Like the ones that we all fucking play. Um the kids are killing each other and then they then whoever's left survives. It's like Hunger Games, I guess. It kind of has like that feel like that, even though this is a little bit more different. But like, it, like that genre of like, hey, you gotta survive till the end. And you have to kill your friends or other people around you. It's always it's kind of been like a thing for like a long time. Yeah, I kind of agree. What do you think, Renee? Did you have you finished Squid Games? I remember. I think. Yeah, I loved Squid Games. Um, like, and I and I think there was talks that there's gonna be a season two, right? Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I just don't know. 
I don't know much about this, like the series, but I just don't know how I feel about getting into something that is like Squid Games. Like it, as much as I like the show, it's not technically a show. Like I wouldn't rewatch season one. It was like so dark and so heavy that like once I finished it, I was like, man, that was that was great, but like I'm done. And I just don't personally see myself like jumping into something that's like it. Mm-hmm. Um. I also don't want to judge it. I'm not, you know, but I don't know how the timing is going to be. I mean, it's coming out next. No, well, what year is it? Oh my god, I like totally blanked out. Like I don't even know when, what year it was. Um, I just, are people still going to be interested in it? I I don't yes. know. I'm, I'm you think so? Yes. I think okay. So, yeah, I think so. I mean, I know there was a lot of traction behind Squid Games, but this isn't. It's like Squid Games, but it's not. It's its own thing. You know what I mean? So I just don't know. Are people going to compare? Are Is there going to be a big following? I'm not sure. Um, I personally um, don't know if I'm going to watch. You know? I don't think it's going to be it's as big as, uh, as Squid Games because I mean, Squid Games became a phenom- phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure it is going to be popular. Squid Games is also compared to a different uh, Japanese uh, movie that came out where like, it had like a similar premise with like the killing games and shit like that so like this is is, squid game is it it's not as original as it seems like this Mm -hmm. that whole like all competing and so you won't die or whatever has been around for a long time so like i i feel like it's still gonna have its its fan base it's not gonna be as big as squid game but you know i still feel like it's gonna do good I, i have i have faith in it yeah and uh let's see what else speaking of having faith i love that rafa i don't <laughs> and the one piece live action cast that was revealed um i feel like a lot of uh a lot of live actions kind of get like shit on before they ever like really come out and you get an actual mm. first look at stuff i mean just look at cowboy bebop um which we'll talk about later but or yeah later if i'm like did we talk about it we kind of touched on base on it but we have, i don't think we talked about it for the pod yet but um we uh, were kind of shown the actors of the new Straw Hat or the Straw Hats for uh, the Netflix live action One Piece series. Uh, we have uh, Inyaki Godoy as Luffy, uh, Makenyu as Zoro, Emily Rudd is Nami, Jacob Romero Gibson is Usopp, and Taz Skylar is Sanji. And like I said, we got some our first looks at the the cast. They even put like a nice little promotional video and said, "Hi, what's up, everybody? I am so and so in the show." And you know, it's getting mixed reviews. A lot of people aren't a big fan of Zoro. Uh, they're saying he has too much of a baby face. Um, a lot of people are saying they're not a big fan of Usopp and they're not a big fan of Sanji. And people would like you know some of them to kind of switch around. And also, they don't really think that the actor of Luffy is. Um, I guess loud enough or he doesn't seem like he can really portray all the goofiness that is Luffy um, and you know as much as I, I'm i kind of iffy on like this show um, I feel like these people that are casted for you know each role are going to try to do their best to really get into like the character and really uh, look the part especially with costume once they get into that phase and you know they change people's hairs that you know need to be changed so for example uh zoro's actor is probably gonna have some kind of like uh mossy green or or mint green color because that's the color of the hair that he has in the show um and you know the costumes and everything like that like it it just like it, it's gonna get better all we all we see is just their faces pretty much um and also to kind of mention that the actor that plays uh zoru was in already like live action anime uh samurai adaptation i forget what for exactly what show uh in anime it was but he looked really really good in that and i think he can do it again in in this one piece live action show but uh one piece is getting a lot of traction as well the 1000th episode of the show for anime is coming out this sunday or rather this saturday night um of this week so you know like one piece is just on the up and up but um for those who are also iffy on live action and um are kind of really looking forward to like you know Cabo Bebop that's to come and things like that like what do you guys think about like the castings also to kind of mention that um each casting is based off of the inspiration that Oda had from each country so for example Luffy is Brazilian uh Zoro is Japanese Sanji is French um Nami is from Sweden and 
Usopp is from Africa, I believe. Um, well, the thing is, is like, this is the thing that annoys me when, when, when stuff like this comes out, is that like people just want to shit on it just yeah. off the cuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, we haven't seen anything. It's just a picture mm-hmm. of the actors. We don't know yet, like, how it's actually going to play out. So I'm not going to be like, oh, what the fuck? They fucked it up, this and that. Like, like I need to actually see it in motion. Yeah. I actually watched a trailer, at least a trailer, to start, like, kind of, like, forming my opinion. Like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like it's, again, I mean, this is not new. People do this on the internet all the time. People have done it. I always bring it up. People have done it with Heath Ledger when he was cast as, as uh, the Joker. Um, it, people were giving John John Cho shit because mm-hmm. they're saying he's too old to be Spike, even though he looks great as Spike. Like, uh, it's just I don't know. It's just it's just the internet being the internet complaining and shit. But like, I'm I'm just I'm just ready to see how it's gonna look. I I have seen a few episodes of One Piece here and there. I've seen clips like the fight scenes like on YouTube. I'm not a big fan. Um, just because there's so many episodes, so it just it just feels like such a task to get into the anime itself. I know Hector, you are like a diehard fan. Yep, yep. So, <clears throat> so it might be a little bit different for you because you you already you do actually have an attachment to these characters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. So you might you you're like, oh, you know, you don't want them to, you know, you don't want them to see them fuck up uh, these characters that you, that you love, right? Because you you spend so much time with them, watching them and and being part of their journey. So I I can. I can can kind of see that i just feel like people need to calm down before they start jumping the gun and and already saying like it's gonna be bad i haven't seen anything yet let's chill out let's see how it plays out who knows if this might the this one piece might be like the gold standard of like live action anime yeah and i mean i i said it before and you know looking at the cast photos I think they look good. Like, I mean, granted, yes, I too, like, I haven't got, I'm not into One Piece. Um, You know, I haven't really given it a chance because he has, like, so many episodes and, like, I I couldn't do it. Um, But just from, like, there was something on the internet, too, where they, they took these, like, cast photos and, like, put them next to, like, the actual animated characters. And I thought, I thought it came pretty close for the most part. Um... And, like, there's, like, you can watch, I think, like, each of these members, um, they, like, did a little video, like, kind of introducing themselves and, like, telling, you know, their their viewers, like, who they were going to be playing. And they all sounded awesome. They looked awesome. They seem very excited to be part of this. And I think, you know, like you guys said, we haven't seen anything yet. We shouldn't judge anything just yet. And like Hector, like you said, you know, once they get into costume and everything, I think it's going to like just tie it all together. And yeah, I think we just hope for the best. But just from what we're seeing right now, I think they look great. That's my just that's my opinion. I think they look fine. Um, I think it's even cute that it's like these wanted posters. I don't really know too much about One Piece, but I just thought that was a cool touch, too. I'm sure that has some sort of tie in with the show right Hector yeah so like the (laughs) wanted posters are essentially like how uh the world government and the pirates themselves kind of like establish hierarchy um Mm -hmm. so the higher your bounty you know the the higher your bounty the the more I guess like bigger your name is so for example the person with the highest bounty that we ever saw on the show was like um I think it was like three point something billion or, or two point something billion uh so like think of it like dead or alive two point something billion for your head um so it's like things like that and um the higher or so like they they always update like the 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 wanted bounties or whatever so the higher your bounty goes the more eyes you get on you and that also means the more heat you're going to get from the marines and from people who are trying to collect the bounty like mm-hmm. bounty hunters and things like that so um so yeah but um yeah i mean i just want to just if you guys are listening to this right and you're gonna you're kind of talking shit about the castings just give it some time uh don't jump the gun like let, let's just see them in their costume let's see them and at least let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and the three episode rule uh if you don't like it after three episodes it's just not for you and, and don't give it the time of day that's that's the best way for you to show uh netflix that like hey like we're not we're not vibing with this this isn't what we were asking this is what we were looking for and it's a little unfortunate but it oh. it just kind of happens all the time like that um and yeah so then from there we jump into 
talking about Cowboy Bebop live action Netflix series is already getting some terrible reviews from a different sources. Um, some notable ones being Forbes. Uh, Forbes is giving it a pretty bad review overall. It's saying some of the good stuff that it does, it does great, but overall it is not a great showing of the show itself. Uh, we're also seeing things like Polygon, Entertainment Weekly, New York Magazine, Consequence, The AV Club, The Playlist, Roger Ebert, Empire. These type of, of media sources are also giving it a... Uh, 58 or below rating on Meta uh, Metacritic, but we're also getting show, uh, sources like Vanity Fair and Rolling Stone giving it a sounding 70 out of 100. So, I mean, this is just them kind of giving their initial thoughts on the show, just showing like, hey, this is what we think um, with what we have and what we have seen. And I think Rafa and Renee, you guys are kind of the most uh, passionate about this because um, you guys are definitely bigger Cowboy Bupa fans than I am. Um, and I mean, yeah, without showing your bias too much, what do you guys think about like all this negative, like reviews that's getting? I don't know. It, it's hard because uh, like you said, we, like, we are big fans of Kawi Bebop. Uh, yeah. I how love, do you take out our bias from Yeah. This? It's really hard <laughs> to do that. I, I love the show. So like seeing that. It, I, I mean, I, I got two emotions pretty much. It's like seeing people giving it bad reviews. It's either either I'm going, uh, it's just a bunch of haters. They don't they don't get it, or it makes me kind of scared that the show's not going to be good, you know. And I don't want it. I want it to be a good show. Um, like I brought it up to you earlier, um, I watched the IGN review. They gave it a seven out of ten. Um, for the most part, they said that the 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 show will look good. The the character the actors portrayed the characters well and the only thing that was kind of like that the, the only thing they faulted against it it was that the, the they added some new story element that didn't really work that well compared to everything that we're already used to um that we that we already seen in cowboy bebop the actual anime itself but the thing is is that like what i'm questioning is that like are they are they holding it to like renee said this are they holding it to the standard of the of the anime itself because if they are, that's kind of not fair. Because this is not, they're not retelling Cowboy Bebop. They're not, they're not, you know, rebooting or whatever. It's it's kind of like a, um, the way that it, it, it seems like it's like it's it's like it's a mixed. It's almost like they're doing their own thing with the story. Apparently, that, that's what they're saying. That it's not a retelling of the original anime, but it's it's just kind of like it's doing their own thing almost like like it was like an alternative universe i guess you can say you know it still has uh, the same story beats that the original anime has but it doesn't follow it exactly how the anime does so it's like are they judging it for the show itself or are they comparing it to the anime if they're judging it with the show itself then okay i guess i just have to take their the reviews how it is but if they're comparing it to the anime i feel like that's not fair and um, for us regulars, we're going to see it comes out on the 19th, mm -hmm. which is in three days. So by next podcast, I'm, you're gonna, you guys are going to know what's my opinion about it because I'm going to watch it. Same. So I'm going to let you know, you know if they're correct or not. Um, I, just hope if they, I just hope that they, they took their bias out when they reviewed it and actually gave us like, like objectively as if it's good or not. Okay, what about you, Renee? Um, I mean, everyone enti is entitled to an opinion, right? So, I mean, I just, it's hard. I mean, granted, we haven't seen it yet. We, you know, yeah, it comes out Friday. Um, I, I, I do see a lot of, um, Cowboy Bebop fans. You know, I, I do see them naturally trying to compare um the animated series with the live action series like it just seems natural for for us to do that right because we lo we love this we love that the animated series so much like and then you're we're now seeing it again but in live we you know live action we're seeing the same characters that we fell in love with i can see people potentially comparing it naturally and i can see them you know not not being too happy with the show just because like rafa said it's not, and they said this from the beginning, it's not a retelling of the actual series. They they are um, 
the main characters and and there's other characters that are still going to be um in the show but it's not going to be exactly played out like how it was in the animated series so like you just have to like i'm going into this with like not high expectations but like i i want to be open-minded like i I gotta tell myself that like hey like you can't compare it because it's you kind of have to treat it like a different like it's its own thing just because it's the same characters doesn't mean anything but i just this, and this is also why I stay off the internet when stuff comes out. I don't like reading reviews. Like, that's just not me. Like, I want to go into this, like, with an open mind. Um, and then, you know, once I see it, now I'll figure out if I like it or not. But, yeah, like Rafa said, I just hope that people aren't writing re- reviews based on just because it's not like the animated series. I'm not expecting it to be like the animated series. Um, I, Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially it. I, I'm still really excited. Um, and yeah, and once again, like, I'm not, this is why I don't like reading things on the internet and, like, seeing what other people are posting about it, just because, like, I, that's their opinion. Like, I want to form my own. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm i still super, super duper excited about seeing this on Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, too. So we'll definitely see what it is. Um or rather what we think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and last, but certainly not least, we move on to the most sought out after, I'm just kidding, the favorite <laughs> episode or segment of the episode. Uh, we're moving on to Anime Swap, and this week we have uh, some heat that Rafa did give us last week. Um, the anime that was given to me by Rafa was Something Something Beyond. I, for- I already forgot the name. It happens. It's okay. Beyond the boundary. Beyond the boundary. Yes. Um. And remember, Rafa, we kind of went over like, well, have I given you this before? Um. It looks similar to something that you had given me before, but you had never actually given me this anime before. Oh, cool. It was Good. a it was a completely brand new experience. Um. I, I guess I'll just start since I kind of already talked about it, but, um. So it starts off with like. Uh, this girl who looks like she's contemplating suicide on top of a of a school, and she's just you know hanging over the ledge on the roof, and then out of nowhere she just does a one eighty backflip over the fence, and then just stabs this guy in the heart, um, that she later find out is an immortal. Uh, and there's like these like hunters and like the I think it's like the spiritual warriors society or something like that, spiritual warriors in the world, how they hunt like these demons and things like that. Um. It was a pleasant surprise. I don't think I'm going to put this in like to my rotation of what I'm watching currently, but it's one of those where it's like I enjoyed the three episodes that I watched. Um, if I were to go back and watch them again, I or not again, but continue watching the show, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, I liked how pretty it was. It was actually a very uh, like pleasant watch. You know what I mean? Like it, it was like really colorful. It was really nice to the eyes when I was checking it out. Um, and and Rafa knows I'm big on on how an anime looks. Um, I don't know how old the anime is. It it definitely felt a little old, but do you remember like it's when it came out? Old. Uh, let me look it up. Um, but yeah, while he looks it up, it's like yeah, it's like uh, regardless, like age didn't really matter. Um, but uh, appearances definitely do matter to to myself. So uh, or rather to me. Um, so I mean, yeah, I liked it a lot. I I actually found myself really enjoying it. Um, I actually got all the way to episode five. Um. Oh, nice. Before I kind of just like not necessarily called it, but like yeah, I kind of dropped it for like other shows that I was watching this season. Um, but I mean, yeah, it caught me by surprise because I watched two more episodes than I thought I was going to. Um, and I think there's only a few, maybe one or two seasons of this show itself. But it, uh, I think it's, it's only, only one, one season. Yeah. yeah, and it's only twelve episodes. Yeah, so I'm about at the halfway point. Um, halfway point, yeah. And I like I like a lot of like the little jokes that they have, especially with the main character um, and like the his like club mate that he kind of has, um, mm-hmm. where she's like, "Oh, like uh, try to stick to it to the end and just give the sorceress girl like keep trying your best so that um, I can confess to you on graduation day and shit like that." Like these little jokes, because like the 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 main protagonist as the male, he's kind of like a like a pervert in a sense. Uh, so I found he- like. He's not really a a pervert. He had a fetish for girls that wear glasses. Yeah, for glasses and also uh, big-breasted women, apparently. Uh, uh, that, but that's a joke, though. That's not necessarily yeah, like, uh, yeah. The, the show came out in 2013. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit... Not old, but also not, like, recent either, so... 
so there you go yeah um i will say like i said i enjoyed it got all the way to episode five um honestly looking at it now i probably might watch an episode or two today who knows but nice um but yeah uh, i i thoroughly enjoyed it um so yeah good shit rafa thank you and now my turn yeah (laughs) yes um okay so I had I was recommended to watch um Angel Beats and um it's okay. <laughs> they like this so you have like the main character and, and I guess that was one of my things too is that like the the premise was a little like it wasn't straightforward in the beginning. I had a hard time kind of figuring out like what the heck was happening. Um, but you have, like, it, it starts off with, like, the main character, um, Otanashi, and he kind of wakes up, and then, like, there's a girl in front of him who has this big old, like, rifle or whatever, and he's kind of like, wait, like, where am I? What's going on? And, like, you kind of find out that he's, like, dead, and that he's, like, in the afterlife, afterlife, essentially. Um, and you know, he meets this other girl, Yuri, who's the one who's, like, has the gun, and, like, you're, the whole, like, the whole thing is that they have to, you gotta try to kill Angel, you know, and and it's this other girl, she looks completely normal, but essentially, like, Yuri's, like, the leader of the, at this point in time, they're the we're not dead yet battlefront, so, like, there's a group of these, these people who are dead, um, and then essentially their their goal is to take down Angel. Am I getting that right, Rafa? Like that's kind of how they like introduced the like first episode. Um, yeah, pretty much that. Like they, it's it's almost like they're trying to reject uh, God itself. They're saying yes. like, hey, we're not we're not dead, or we're we're not ready to move on to the afterlife. So we're gonna fight until until we win. Pretty much. They're, yeah. they're, they're like the rebellion. Yes. And, like, Angel, there's, like, just something weird about her. Um, She, like, she's, like, super powerful. She has all these, like, different abilities, but, like, she has no emotions. She doesn't really talk much. Like, she's kind of, like, her own thing. Like, they don't really know who she is, but um, they just know that she's the enemy. I mean, the whole point, like, the whole three episodes is them literally just trying to take her down. Um, The show, I would say, very beautiful. I think like Hector, like animation is a big deal to me. Like, um, it looked, it looked like super clear. Like the characters looked beautiful. Everything about it was really nice. I just wasn't super into the story. And that's just, just based off the three episodes. Um, I, I, I didn't love the main character. You know, he's still having, he's still trying to figure out like what the heck is happening. Like he lost all his memories. So he doesn't really remember much. Um, and just some of the characters, like, Yuri, I would say, like, she's, she's pretty cool, like, you also, like, learn more about her backstory, too, on, like, what happened in her previous life before, you know, before she became who she is, um, I just, yeah, Rafa, like, it's good, but I don't think this is something that I would keep watching, um, Mm -hmm. just based off those three episodes, yeah, but it was, it was nice looking like it was still it still had its moments like a lot of the fighting scenes when they are going against angel um those were some cool scenes i just i don't think i was like hooked on the story like on the premise and maybe it builds up but like just based off what i watched in the beginning i wasn't like super into it Mm-hmm. Well, it does build up uh there, I figured. there's, there's a <laughs> lot yeah i mean there's a lot of these still don't know about um, I know I I really enjoyed the show. Like it really, like, yeah. Like that was when I was really into anime, and like I was just like knee deep in anime. Like, that was like mm-hmm. one of those shows that like really got to me. It's a show that I, that I still remember to this day. So like it really made an impact on me. But eh, it's each his own, you know. So you you you're figuring <laughs> out what you like. So factual, yeah, factual. Yeah, true. I just feel bad. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Well, speaking of figuring out what you like, Renee, this is your week to recommend both Rafa and myself some anime. So, what have you got for us? All right. You guys don't hate me, okay? Um, 
I don't know. I'm so not this... liking slime. I already do. So you know. I'm sorry. I know. I'm <laughs> I know that. I know that was gonna create some space between us. Um. So this is an anime. Um. It's a fall anime. I don't think you guys watched it. It wasn't on your list. It definitely was not on mine. Um. And I remember when we were told to like, you know, pick the anime we were gonna watch for this season. I remember seeing this, like the like the thumbnail, like the artwork for it, and I'm like, this show's like super lame like there's that's probably like a kid show or whatever but after seeing these like anime rankings each week it's still like top 10 it and i remember it was not on the top 10 list a few weeks ago and then all of a, all of a sudden i don't know i think it was already like rank five or six this week i forgot what we said ranking of kings did you guys okay. watch it I no, I have, I have not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen it. It definitely is one of I, the ones that I wanted to I, mad avoid, but I, I understand. already know you guys are gonna hate me. But I just want to know what's up with this show because once again, I remember this show not even being a thing until like it was on that like top anime list, like back to back to back. Um. The like character, I don't know much about it either. The character just looks so cute. Like it, he looks precious. I just, I just want to know why people are into it. So I want to see if you guys can figure it out. <laughs> here's the here's the synopsis. Um, the uh, the summary is the web manga centers around Boji, a deaf, powerless prince who cannot even mm. wield the children's sword. As the firstborn son, he strives hard and dreams of becoming the world's greatest king. However, people mutter about him behind his back as a good-for-nothing prince and no way he can be king. Boji is able to make his first-ever friend, Kage, shadow. A literal shadow on the ground who somehow understands Boji well. Kage is a survivor of the Kage assassin clan that was all but wiped out. No longer a killer, Kage now makes ends meet by stealing. The story follows Boji's coming of age as he meets various people in his life, starting with his fateful encounter with Kage. It sounds cute. It sounds interesting. <laughs> it sounds it's interesting. So Definitely something I would not have checked out if I wasn't told to, but <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, know. we'll see. I just, I just, once again, same. Like, I saw this thing and I was like, no way, like, hard pass. But they're doing something right. Like, people, people are really liking the show. I just want to know why and if mm. it's worth shopping if it's worth um watching mm, okay well me and rafa will definitely tell you uh on next week episode Sorry, so Hector, I know. no no it's fine i mean that's the whole point of this to either to get out of our comfort zone or to check out stuff that we haven't or that we overlooked and so here we go on another ride but every guys every anyways thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's episode we have officially finished episode 28 so with that being said rafa renee any final shout outs you want to give uh, quick shout out to Geek Jar Two Thousand. That's uh, where you're watching this. If you're on YouTube, uh, and if you're on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts, it is uh, uh, other. What's it's our group uh, that we're in, Hector and I. We're in too, uh, where we pod. Uh, we do other podcasts. We have the Playing Pod, where we talk about video games. We have the Pan Pals, where we talk about comic books and everything that revolves around that. And we also have a, the, the Derailed podcast, where we just kind of goof off for about an hour. So if you're looking for more entertainment, more podcasts to listen to that revolves around us, go ahead and check those out uh, on YouTube. They're under the same YouTube channel, Geek Jar 2000. And if you're uh, on a, any other streaming service, uh, it's under the Geek Jar 2000 name, so you can find it on there. Cool beans. And then, yeah, just giving a quick shout out. To artists and gamer shop, an Etsy shop that that Alex and I started um in the beginning of the year, and yeah, we make art and gaming inspired mugs of decor. So if you guys haven't you know checked us out yet, check us out, artists and gamer shop. And last but not least, make sure to check us out on Twitch. Each one of us streams. Uh, Renee does the awesome art stuff that she has on her channel. Myself and Rafa are gaming channels, so definitely come check us out while we stream. Everything you need to the links and our Twitch channels will be in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on episode 29. See you later. Bye, guys.